Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake desktop processors have been around for some time now. While the company did face incredible challenges and setbacks for the past couple of years, it looks like Team Blue is finally back to its former glory. From being stuck on the 14nm node for god knows how long to losing business with Apple, the past couple of years have been especially testing for Intel. But with their Alder Lake CPUs, Intel has delivered possibly the most substantial generational upgrade ever in the history of the core lineup of processors. So before heading into the review, it's crucial that we at least have a basic understanding of how just differently built the 12th gen CPUs are. There's Big Dot Little Hybrid Architecture, or Big Bigger as Intel likes to call it, a new Intel 7 process node, uh, something called Thread Director, and a lot of platform upgrades. Let's start with the bell of the ball, the hybrid architecture. Unlike your typical processor with a single homogeneous CPU design, Alder Lake has a hybrid heterogeneous core architecture that consists of high-performance P-cores and high-efficiency E-cores based on a new Golden Cove and Grace Mont microarchitecture respectively. Such CPU design is pretty common on ARM-based mobile processors, but x86-based Intel and AMD have been married to the traditional CPU layout with a single class of high-performance cores for as long as there have been Intel and AMD processors. Technically, Intel did experiment with hybrid core design in 2020 with Lakefield, but they were short-lived and discontinued the very next year of the release. Now, getting back to Alder Lake, the P cores are your run of the mill performance cores that bring 19% improvement over 11 gen Cypress Cove cores at the same frequency, says Intel. These handle demanding single threaded workloads that are time and latency sensitive, like gaming and video rendering. On the contrary, the high-efficiency E-cores are something borrowed from the company's Atom class of low-powered Celeron and Pentium Silver branded processors. So as you could imagine, the efficiency cores are tasked with all the other requests that are not as demanding, like your background tasks and other multi-threaded workloads. The idea of fusing these two in a single chip is that the aforementioned background task will not use up the valuable resources of the high-performance cores while simultaneously delivering a lot more power-efficient workflow. Now, all this sure sounds fantastic for Team Blue, but the problem arises when the operating system cannot properly schedule threads to the P and E cores. You can easily guess how terrible a gaming session would be if uh, the operating system assigned a game's process request to E cores instead of P cores. And that's exactly where the Intel Thread Director comes in. It's a microcontroller built directly inside the CPU, which monitors each thread and the state of each core, and forwards this information to the operating system. The operating system scheduler then uses this info to decide where each thread goes, either to a performance or an efficiency core. Intel has worked closely with Microsoft to build a scheduler that can recognize the hybrid architecture of Alder Lake processors in Windows 11. As a result, Windows 11 has a clearer idea of the P-cores and E-cores, their uh, power and efficiency levels. Conversely, Windows 10 simply recognizes E-cores as lesser capable P-cores, disregarding their performance for what capability for less demanding workloads. Intel and Microsoft even uh, promise better performance and efficiency for all the lake processors on Windows 11. So just how much of that holds true? Well, not much, apparently. We ran our core i7-12700K through a bunch of performance and gaming benchmarks on Windows 10 and 11, where the results were, let's say, less than flattering for the new operating system. We're also coming up with a separate video about 12 gens performance on the two operating systems, but um, here's a little sneak peek. The i7-12700K finished the Blender BMW 27 vendor in 1 minute and 48 seconds on Windows 10 and took a second more on Windows 11. Similarly, Windows 11 lagged behind its predecessor by a negligible 3 seconds in classroom render cycle. Cinebench R23 paints a similar picture in both single-core and multi-core tests where Windows 10 comes off victorious. They're neck-to-neck -neck in terms of power draw as well. 
on the gaming front too, we did not find any compelling argument for Windows 11. CSGO managed an average of 361 FPS in our 1080p DDoS2 gameplay with a 1% low of 199 FPS on Windows 10, which marginally falls behind the 371 FPS average and 201 FPS 1% low of Windows 11. But there are some surprises and some heartbreaks about Alder Lake's performance on these two operating systems. So make sure you're subscribed to our channel so that you don't miss out on that video. Okay, another big upgrade that Intel has brought with the 12 gen CPUs is the Intel 7 process node, which is 10 nm based. After being stuck on the 14 nm node for our desktop processors for multiple generations, this is a welcome breath of fresh air. While Intel's not winning the power efficiency battle against AMD anytime soon, this is still a pretty big deal. Team Red's Ryzen 5000 series were already based on a 7nm manufacturing process, and the company has confirmed TSMC's 5nm technology for the upcoming Zen 4 based Ryzen 7000 CPUs. That leaves us with the other platform upgrades introduced with Alder Lake processors. The most notable of them has to be the DDR5 RAM and PCIe 5.0 support. However, motherboards based on the Intel 600 series chipsets for the 12th gen processors will have either DDR5 or DDR4 slots, not both. So far, the company has announced four chipsets in this lineup. B660, H610, H670, and Z690. Unfortunately, Alder Lake uses the new LG A1700 socket and therefore is not compatible with older motherboards, which means the platform upgrade cost for these CPUs will be a lot higher than, say, going from 10 Gen Comet Lake to 11 Gen Rocket Lake that use the same LG A1200 socket. Therefore, in order to test the performance difference between last year's Core i7-11700K and the i7-12700K, we went with the ASUS TUF Gaming Z690 Plus D4 motherboard for the latter. DDR5 is way too expensive right now, it's um, hard to find and looking at a bunch of reviews, we found that it does not deliver a significant performance jump either. Our motherboard capitalizes on this circumstance as it only supports DDR4 memory. And for our 11 gen setup, we use the ASUS TUF Gaming Z590 Plus Wi-Fi. Apart from the motherboard and the CPU itself, the rest of the setup is identical between our two systems. To ensure a bottleneck-free test scenario, we went with the MSI RTX 3070 Ventus 2X OC graphics card, uh, AITC's KAF240 AIO water cooler, and the MSI MPG A850GF 850W 80 Plus Gold PSU. Likewise, we've installed two sticks of AITC Rapids 8GB DDR4 3600 CL18 RAM and 1TB of AITC FZ300 PCIe Gen 3 SSD. All these are housed inside the XPG Battlecruiser EATX Super Mid Tower case that comes with four XPG Vento 120mm ARGB fans. Okay, so before moving forward with the review, let's check out their specs real quick. The Core i7-11700K is an 8-core 16-thread CPU with 3.6 GHz of base and 5.0 GHz of single-core max turbo frequency. Besides, it has 16 MB of Intel Smart Cache and 125 Watt TDP. On the other hand, the i7-12700K has 8 B-cores and 4 E-cores with 20 threads in total. The base frequency of the P and E cores are listed at 2.70 and 3.60 GHz respectively. Moreover, the E cores can hit up to 3.80 GHz, whereas the P cores can turbo boost up to 5.0 GHz. Cache memory has also been bumped to 25 MB here, and the company is also changing its power rating standard with Alder Lake CPUs. Instead of a single TDP value that's not indicative of the highest power level, these processors have a processor base power, PBP, and maximum turbo power. I ran all our tests at stock speeds, but you can get 4 to 8% higher performance if you choose to overclock these CPUs. Additionally, our operating system of choice here is Windows 10 Pro because of its greater reliability and overall stability than Windows 11. 
So, my benchmark test starts with 7-zip 32MB dictionary compression where the i7-12700K pulls off a healthy 20% lead against the i7-11700K. The performance gap gets wider on the decompression benchmark where Alder Lake ends up with 119 GIPS compared to around 87 GIPS on the 11700K. In our Blender All-Core BMW 27 benchmark, the 12th Gen CPU finished it at 1 minute and 48 seconds, whereas the Core i7-11700K took 65 seconds more. Same thing with Classroom, where the newer processor wins out by a substantial 58%. Not just performance, but Alder Lake has a considerable advantage in terms of power efficiency as well. Here, the 11 Gen CPU draws around 218 watts throughout the render cycle, and the i7-12700K consumed roughly 17% less power at 186 watt. Moving on to Cinebench R23 single core test, the i7-12700K scored 1873 while the i7-11700K managed 1544. Because Cinebench bears a linear relation with a processor score count like Blender, uh, multi-core results are all the more impressive on Alder Lake. More specifically, we're seeing a whopping 67% better score on the 12th gen CPU. Although Cinebench R23 is not that emblematic of a system's sustained performance, I still ran a 30 minutes stress test to see these processors' power levels, uh, temperature, and any thermal throttling tendencies. While it was not taxing enough to cause thermal throttling in either CPUs, Order Lake was once again the more power efficient of the two, even though the max temperature in both the CPU package was at about 93 degrees. The Core i7-12700K is easier on the power supply in Cinebench single core test as well, where it was drawing 41.3 watt power as compared to 51.6 watt by the i7-11700K. In contrast, IDA64 gives us a better view of a CPU's performance under stress. Mere seconds into the 30-minute stress test, our 11 gen processor was greeted with a CPU throttling overheating detected message. After 5 minutes into the test, we graphed its power level at a colossal 205 watt, whereas it got as hot as 111 degrees Celsius at one point. The i7-12700K passes the test with flying colors with no thermal throttling, just a 148 watt power draw and a peak temperature of 83 degrees. Next up is the Corona 1.3 benchmark where the i7-12700K is faster by a little over 50%. V-Ray 5 CPU render tells the same story where Alder Lake outclasses its Rocket Lake predecessor by a staggering 60%. On to some real-world tests, the Core i7-12700K finished our Premiere Pro render in custom 1080p H.264 settings in around 26 minutes, which is impressively ahead of the i7-11700K that completed the render in 35 minutes. Similarly, when converting a custom 1080p H.264 file to H.265 on Handbrake, the 12th gen was 35% faster. Weirdly enough, the i7-11700K eked out a feeble victory in 4K H.264 to H.265 conversion, completing the task 4 seconds quicker than what the i7-12700K managed. On the other hand, this 12th gen processor scored 15,631 on 3D Mark's Time Spy CPU benchmark. That's 32% higher than the i7-11700K's uh, 11,868. Not that it matters a whole lot, but we also ran a few GPU benchmarks including Unigine Heaven, Firestrike Extreme, and Firestrike Ultra where the i7-12700K was victorious by the tiniest of margins. Okay, let's get into the gaming side of things now. CSGO averaged at 331 FPS with 1% and 0.1% low of 198 and 125 FPS under 1080p gameplay at very high settings on the Core i7-11700K. The Alder Lake counterpart manages roughly 9% better average FPS, although its 1% and 0.1% lows are basically the same as 11 gen. For some reason, the 1440p gameplay yielded even superior results on the Core i7-12700K, although not by much, with a 364fps average and 1% low of 201fps. The i7-11700K sees a minor dip at 1440p, delivering 317fps on average. 
Likewise, this 12th gen processor gave a nominal 6% better average FPS on Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p Extreme and 9% higher average FPS at 1080p Ultra settings. Civilization 6 Gathering Storm's in-game Gathering Storm AI benchmark results are practically the same across the two CPUs at both 1080p and 1440p high quality. Technically, the i7-11700K's average turn time is around 5% faster. This Rocket Lake CPU was also marginally ahead in Shadow of the Tomb Raider's 1080p in-game benchmark at the highest graphic settings, but the Core i7-12700K regains the momentum with a 5% higher average FPS under high preset. Red Dead Redemption 2's results are comparable between these two processors at both high and medium settings, since this game is more GPU-bound in nature. It's the same with Control as well, where the Core i7-11700K ends up at 132 FPS average under DX12 1080p high preset, compared to 132 FPS on Alder Lake. Finally, Cyberpunk 2077 sings the same song with similar results at 1080p high preset and an 11 gen favorable performance under medium settings. Anyway, the Core i7-12700K does have better power efficiency even when gaming, circling around the 105 watt territory on Cyberpunk 2077's 1080p high preset. To compare, we measured the i7-11700K's power draw at 134 watt, which is about 27.6% more. So wrapping it all up, it goes without saying that Intel's finally, finally back and pretty handsomely, might I add. After being in the doghouse for the past couple of generations of products, Alder Lake is an entirely new chapter in the company's book. For this, Intel has conjured up a bunch of innovations from the hybrid core architecture to a new 10nm process and all the platform upgrades that I discussed earlier like DDR5 and PCIe 5.0 support. Compared to last year's Core i7-11700K, the i7-12700K brings a tremendous uplift in both single and multi-threaded workloads. But power efficiency is something that haunts Intel to this day despite leaving the 14nm node back at long last. And if you were thinking of upgrading from your old Intel setup to Alder Lake, then the new socket makes the upgrade a lot more expensive. However, this should not be that big of a deal to someone building a new system entirely. At the end of the day, the fact remains that if you're looking to buy a new CPU right now, then Alder Lake is absolutely the way to go. The Core i7-12700K easily beats out the i7-11700K and even AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X at almost the same price, which is insane. And just a few months after its launch, you can already find it at discounted prices, down to $375 from $409. Unfortunately, markets like Nepal and India are not privy to such price drops where this CPU currently retails at 75,000 Nepali rupees and 40,000 Indian rupees respectively. But if you're in no rush to get a new CPU, then waiting till the second half of 2022 to see AMD's Ryzen 7000 series in action would be a wise decision. So guys, that was all for this really lengthy video. If you like watching such tech content, don't forget to subscribe to Gadget Byte and hit that bell icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.